Medium back again. Uh, some of my friends have been bugging me about making new videos, and I actually have some. I just got to edit them and post them. But I'm definitely going to do this one first because uh, everybody needs a tire machine if you're going to be a redneck hillbilly homesteader. Because you know you can't wait until Monday if it's Saturday afternoon and you got to repair a tire and you got stuff to do. So uh, welcome to Homestead University, where I try not to swear and offend liberals and communists. And today I'm going to show you. This is a $50 Harbor Freight tire changer that I actually bought about three or four years ago just because I wanted this for changing tires. And then I decided to resurrect my old F-150 out here and I need to spin the tires around because the tire shop, or the, the shop I took it to for a ball joint, which was a mistake taking my, sh my stuff to somebody else, they went ahead and rebuilt the front end and it has never been able to be aligned ever since. And it's chewing up my tires. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. There's lots of one-star reviews on Harbor Freight's website because people say they break it. That's because they don't have patience and they don't know what they're doing. I'm gonna show you a couple things. I'm gonna show you a couple tips on how to do these tires. You'll be able to change this like a pro. It ain't even gonna be worth going to town to get your tires changed. Okay, the tools that we are going to need. When you go to Harp Freight, pick up your $50 tire changer, you're probably going to want to get a couple spoons, although I think I bought those at um, Tractor Supply. You're going to need a Schrader valve tool and a blower, and of course you're going to need compressed air. So, uh, well, and your tire changer. But, all right, let's do this. All right, tip number one, if you have like a 1997 or newer F-Series truck, these lag bolts are not 7 8 they're actually 21 millimeter, they're metric, 7 8 is 22 millimeter, and so you should probably just go somewhere, maybe other than Harbor Freight, go get yourself a good quality 21 millimeter sock, okay? Other tip here is before, this truck sat for several years over here in my yard, so before you try to take the tire off, squirt a little bit of lube into your socket so that the lug nuts don't get stuck. Watch this. Ha <laughs> ha! No problem. The guy at the tire shop told me, oh, you put it on the ground and you smack it with a hammer and blah, blah, blah. No, put a little bit of loose. Look at that. Like butter. All right, let's get this done. All right, the other thing that you will need is a spray bottle full of uh, water and dish soap. Because... Like the nuts, rubber and lube like each other. <laughs> they go together well. All right, so we're gonna take our little Schrader valve tool here, and we're gonna pop the Schrader valve out, and we're gonna let the tires plate. Be careful. Yep. All right, then we are going to literally spritz this. I usually don't like to use the term liberal, but this is Scotty's Homestead University where I don't make fun of those people. In fact, we want you to subscribe because we can re-monetize my stuff because they demonetized my STR Canadian channel because apparently it went against their policies. So, all right, tip number one, fold this thing to the floor. You can go to Lowe's, get two-inch uh, drop-in, drop-in, uh, what do they call those things? Anchors. Drop in anchors, that's it. Drop in anchors and you're good. Okay, the second tip I'm going to give you, come here real quick. Let me show you the anatomy of a tire. This is the sidewall. This is not the bead, okay? The sidewall is made to flex. The bead is actually down in here. So where I think a lot of these people are going wrong is they're trying to push with all their weight, trying to pop this bead when they're pushing on the sidewall and then they bend this stuff and then they go on Harbor Freight's website and make themselves look dumb by giving a bad review. So, we want lube, lube is our friend. Now remember this tire's been on here for at least five years and that truck sat without moving for about three. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push on the sidewall, come on up here so you can get that. Take your foot or something. So you press on the sidewall. You you work that shoe in. So it's pressing on the bead. And then when you got it on the bead, give it some lube, man. That rubber and lube go together really well. See, I'm not putting my full weight into it. So you 
you're not fat and like 225 pounds like me, you can still do this. All right. I'm going to turn it. Believe it or not, I moved that bead a little bit when I did that. Okay, and same thing. Walk this shoe in so that now it's on the bead. We're gonna give it some move. Okay. Give it a little pressure. Make sure you keep this straight when you're giving it some pressure. But you can see that did move that bead because that shoe didn't get stuck in there, right? And you wanna make sure your tire is here. Good with the bead, or that shoe. Lots of lift. You like lots of lift. Right there. And there you go. There you go, without breaking it. <laughs> so now we're just going to go quick around the rest of the tire. All right? We'll come back. Let me stop. Yep. All right, we're not going to bore you with this because this side goes the same. It's just going to go a lot easier. So, we'll come back when I'm ready to do the rest. All right, we got the tire with the bead broken. We did not break our machine. You know, I'm in my 40s. I broke more than my fair share of stuff, ramming stuff. You get real good at wrenching when you break stuff and you have to fix it. So, I'd rather build stuff. I'm getting sick of sick fixing stuff. Take this, flip her up on top here. We got our little thing with here that goes through one of the holes. One more. There it is. And you want to center then this tire just like that on this post. You take this little washer thing of majiggy, throw her on there. Take that, throw it down. This actually does a pretty remarkable job of keeping that tire in, or the wheel in place. Take this, stick her in here. Now when you bolt this thing down, make sure you got it in a spot where you're going to be able to walk around. Alright. We should have lots of lube, but rubber and lube go together. can never have them. Or too much. Okay, so we're gonna pop this. See how I did that? Stick that in there. So, oh, whoa, whoa! Stick that in there. Go like that. Now we're gonna try to do that. Okay, now we don't want to rip it because we don't want to be in a hurry and have to get a whole new tire. The whole point of me doing this is try to get another twenty thousand miles. Away out of these tires. So, that's where our extra spoons come in. We can get in there. Now, the other thing I gotta show you is the groove. We talked about the anatomy of the tire. Well, get in here. This is the anatomy of a rim. You see there's a groove there where it's indented? It's only about two inches. Every rim's got that. You need to get your bead down into that groove in order to get the other side of the bead off of the rim. And if you do that, you have a little bit of patience, Oops. you can do that. There we go. All right. See, we didn't damage the tire, which is our number one priority. This is why you want the sucker bolted down. And just like that. Boom. Because I had it in the groove. Now, pull this up. Get her into the groove. You might want to spray some more lube. I mean, water and dish soap is practically free. No point. Alright, so. You take that like that. You make sure this is in the groove. Make sure that bead is in the groove. I'm 
I'm not going to kill myself because I got extra spoons. You just work it, be patient. It's not dirty to it if it makes you feel good. Come on. Come on, baby. Pop off for me. <laughs> oh my. Try going the other way if you want. But if you're patient and you keep that in that groove, she'll come pretty easily. Try to work your rubber with that loop. We all know what happens. You got torn rubber. 18, no, what is it? <laughs> 18 years of child support. <laughs> Trust me. 18 years of child support ain't worth saving 80 bucks on getting your tires done. on the lube, you're going to be on Harbor Freight's website complaining about their part changing machine being junk. Scotch-Brite pad. I'm going to soak this up good. Because we don't want a rim leak. It's not good when your rim's leaking. You end up like Joe Biden when he went to see the Pope, you know. Come back an hour later and you'll soak. Oh my God. It's <laughs> not good if your rim's leaking. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't supposed to say that on this channel, was I? No. Sorry, commies. It worked. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to do the other side. Then we're going to wipe this sucker out with the uh, paper towels, the shop towels. And we're going to put it back on. All right. We got our bead clean, cleaned out. We got our rim all clean. We wiped the tire out so we don't have a bunch of water and crap in it. And we're going to start. Now. As I said before, most important part to this is getting in the groove. So we're going to push that tire on and make sure it's in the groove. You can see the groove right here, right? Push that tire on like that. Oh yeah, baby, get in the groove. And then, put some more lube around that. Take a nice tender spot and push it on. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, baby, I like that. Take this one. Remember, keep it in the groove. Yeah, baby, come on. Keep it in the groove. Keep the tire tool on the other side of the room, too. See? Sometimes you just gotta talk dirty to it. I love it. Loop that rubber up and talk dirty. 
works pretty much every time. Oh yeah, see that? Just gotta keep it in the groove. And then same thing on this side. Keep it in the groove. Get your spoon. Work your way around, but make sure you push that bead into the groove. Keep it in the groove. Come on, groove with it, baby. Yeah. See? Push down. Keep it in the groove. You'll never get that bead on unless you do. You might, but you might rip it. If you rip it, you're a real dumbass. Because that's all steel bands in there. Alright. Get the groove, baby. Come on. Push it down in the groove. Like that. Down into the groove. Just like that. We got a tire back on the rim. We got our air blower. Kind of need a decent sized compressor though to do this. All right. Sometimes it helps to have an assistant because you could you gotta adjust the tire up on the rim. But this one looks good. So we're gonna give her a blast of air. Right there. I had to do that. There we go. It's gonna pop pretty loud. Boom. Should hear the other side go. <laughs> ah, success! <laughs> Look at that. Alright, pop the trigger valve back in there carefully. A little blow out of your hand. And there you go. I didn't even break it. So, anyways, I hope this uh, is helpful. I hope you realize that there are a lot of dumb people leaving reviews on Harbor Freight's website and that I'm a lot smarter than them. So, until next time, uh, you know, keep your stick on the ice, eh?